All right, looks like I've got 6.01. I'm going to ask everybody just to turn their cameras on for just a moment so that we can uh, do some introductions here, especially uh, the members of the road committee, please. <laughs> All right, so I've got Leslie, Cindy, Denny. Um, Leslie, are you expecting any more members of your committee? Oh, you're, you're muted. Sorry. That's the okay. only one that actually confirmed to me was Adam. Uh, I did talk to Cindy earlier. She wasn't sure, but apparently you said that she, she's on. Yep, she is. So, okay. All right, it's 6.03, so if the board is okay, we'll uh, go ahead and get started. So today is 6 it's 6.03 on February 25th. This is a joint workshop between the Board of Selectmen, the Road Committee, and uh, we have with us Chris Fournier from HEB Engineering. So we're just going to start with a brief introduction so that everybody knows um, who everybody is. Uh, David, as the liaison, will kind of host the meeting, and Mr. Fournier has been, um, we can, he's going to share his screen and kind of go through and walk through the proposals for you. So just a little raise of hand. Uh, we'll start with Chris Fournier from HEB. There he is. Yep. Thank you. Uh, the yep. Board of Selectmen that are with us, uh, we have the Chair, Kim Stacy Horn. We have uh, Ed Walsh and David Winchell, Jr. From the Road Committee, we have the Chair, Leslie Berlin. We have Cindy Hart. And we have Denny Long, which, oh, oh, there's Denny. Thank you. And both of our road commissioners um, are with us as well. And as I mentioned to you earlier, serve as members. Uh, Will Langley, who covers District 1. Just raise your hand, Will. <laughs> Thank you. And then uh, Adam Dolliber, who is our District 2 road commissioner. And if I, if I understood correctly, this is on his side of town, correct? All right. We do have a couple yes, of members. Okay, a couple of members of the public, but we'll, um, they're certainly welcome to say. Mr. Winchell, take it away. How are we doing? Um, so I guess what we've done here is we're, um, the subject has come back up. Um, you know, we, we're in bridge mode again. And um, what we've, we've got some questions on the, uh, the proposals that were given by you guys. And um, I guess pretty much is we like to have a walk through um, for the road committee. And um, obviously the select board um, and the road commissioners to see exactly, you know, what our best option is, uh, why these proposals are what they are, and, um, you know, obviously going over the cost and all that or what we're going to get. So um, uh, I guess we'll start with um, you, Chris, you know, see, you know, explain what you've uh, given us. Sure. Uh, yep. Let me just share my screen here. Just uh, one minute. All right. Are you able to see that now? What's that? Are you able to see my screen now? No. I can't, no, we can't see your screen now. Oh, there you go, Chris. All right. Very good. Good job. <laughs> Technology. All right. So, yeah, I'm just going to uh, provide a quick summary of what we've done to date and uh, a quick executive summary of the findings of the report. And uh, feel free to to interject as we go. I know, I know timing can be a little tough uh, with these virtual settings, but uh, we can certainly touch on any topic and, and move back in this uh, throughout the uh, presentation. But... Uh, just a quick review um, of where we've been. So we, we did provide a preliminary design report uh, back in June of 2019. And um, the report was just for consistency, prepared in the main DOT format. And um, included as part of that report was uh, an H&H &H analysis of the river there. Um, 
And then in December of 2019, we had a, just a follow-up call with uh, David and Jennifer um, just to recap that and provide a little bit of clarification. Um, and then uh, here we are today. So a little bit summary about the bridge. So it is a 22-foot span concrete jack arch uh, built 91 years ago. Um, here's a photo of the underside of that where we can see uh, rusted corrugated steel um, basically pipe segments um, that act as formwork for the concrete deck above. Uh, so that steel is rusted, but it's not really doing anything anymore. Um, the bridge is half in Acton and half in Milton, which creates um, a little bit of complexity um, regarding that part of things. The vehicular traffic is five to 700 vehicles a day. And the Salmon Falls River um, generally is about 50 feet wide in the vicinity of this 22 foot span bridge. Um, and it is 91 years old. And we do wanna note that the typical life cycle for a bridge is 75 years. And because it is half in, in Maine and half in New Hampshire, have you know double the amount of regulatory reviews associated with it. Back in 2019, when we reviewed the bridge, uh, the condition of the superstructure, so the part you drive on and the part that supports all the weight, was considered fair. Um, the bridge rail, obviously, on each side had been impacted and. Uh, it's unclear to me right now if it had been repaired um, since that time. And the substructure or the abutments as they're most likely usually called, um, were in fair condition, although there was a, a significant concern about scour, um, basically the undermining of soil underneath the abutment on the Acton side. So while the bridge remains in fair condition overall, um, sort of the scouring, which can cause a, a catastrophic type failure. Um, and it's, it's really hard to judge when the scouring will become too much um, and uh, really threaten the stability of that bridge. Um, as an example, um, we, we did some work just across the border in Wakefield. And uh, they, you probably know this, uh, the Maple Street Bridge was in fact that, you know, the bridge was ultimately in, in fair condition at the time when it collapsed um, quite a few years ago now, but scouring on the side that's uh, not shown in the photograph caused that end to drop down, you know, a foot or two, and ultimately the bridge has been closed since. Um, so that's that's the, the what we're trying to avoid. So the study looked at um, several alternatives and um, the first alternative was a 40-foot span bridge replacement project. So taking out that 22-foot span bridge and, and installing a 40-foot span bridge. So it's a significant size change from what's there now, um, and we can, we can talk about the reasoning. And this, this uh, alternative that we studied and evaluated um, included significant roadway raising, uh, to accommodate the hydraulic requirements of both Maine and New Hampshire. This uh, alternative is a compromise, so it doesn't technically meet the, the, the complete rules of either state, um, but we found that usually um, the states are willing to compromise when a case can be made for, uh, you know, financial hardship of actually meeting the full intent of the rules. So there are waivers that can be obtained. Um, the bridge width would be significantly wider than the bridge that's there now. It's about 20 to 22 feet wide right now. Um, because of the vicinity of the curve in the road um, on the Acton side, um, this bridge would need to be a little bit wider to meet minimum roadway design requirements. Again, as we discussed, the, the minimum service life of a new bridge would be 75 years. Um, it would entail a four month uh, construction duration, including road closure. And then in 2019, we estimated a probable cost of basically $900,000. And um, just to, to give you an idea of what that may look like, um, this is a recently completed bridge 
uh, exactly a 40 foot span bridge. Um, so not, not too dissimilar to the bridge that's out there now, um, but um, obviously a, a bigger span. So alternative two was a, um, a new 69 foot span bridge. Now, um, again, this one still has um, significant raising to meet the hydraulic requirements of both Maine and New Hampshire. And because of its longer span, it meets the, the span regulatory requirements of both states. So we talked about the, the Salmon Falls River having about a 50 foot bank full width. This size bridge creates, spans that 50 foot width and has an acceptable buffer on each side um, that both Maine and New Hampshire require. So this one would not require any waivers um, through that permitting process. Um, because it is longer and it, it then creeps closer to that, that curve in the road, um, it does need to be a little bit wider than the first alternative. Uh, it has a similar life service, um, similar duration of closure and a probable cost in 2019 of, of 1.4 million. So it does, does add. So part of that, um, the justification for potentially moving forward with alternative one is the large you know, financial discrepancy between really meeting all of the uh, regulatory requirements or a compromise. So um, the reason this alternative was included in the report was to demonstrate down the line when we go through the permitting process was to show the large disparity between the cost of fully meeting the rules and um, sort of a compromise situation of a 40 foot span. The third alternative we um, looked at in the design report was um, le less of an alternative and more of a likely immediate action. So um, this is rehabilitating the existing bridge. Uh, like I said, the scour concern is, is the biggest concern with the remainder of the bridge condition in fair, in fair condition. Um, and we're looking to basically mitigate that immediate collapse um, ability. So uh, it's really those large storm events where the flow of velocities get really high that start to suck out some of that gravel and, and sand that's underneath the bridge uh, abutments um, that we're worried about. It's, it's, it's not normally the day-to-day -day flows in that river, but it's really those storm events that really get things moving and can cause some stability concerns. So um, this is definitely something we recommend moving forward with. Um, the expected minimum service life for this alternative is just five years though. So it is a, it is a band-aid. I mean, the bridge is still 91 years old. Um, you know, at the end of this, it's going to be nearly 100 years old. Um, this, the condition is going to continue to deteriorate of the portions of the structure that we, we haven't done anything with this time around. And um, ultimately, you know, it is, it is trending and as is every bridge towards replacement. Rehabilitation, we think, should only take about a month, um, and it would involve road closure to properly address the bridge rail issues. And back in 2019, um, we had a probable cost of about $95,000 for that repair. Um, following the, the conversation we had back in December of 2019, there are a few sort of important items to note. Um, you know, as design progresses, uh, we'll be refining the H&H uh, analysis. I know there was concern about the magnitude of the roadway raising that was that went along with increasing the hydraulic capacity at this at this point. Um, but I think through uh, gathering of more data and a little bit further analysis, um, we'll be able to reduce the amount that the roadway would need to be raised in this area. Additionally, in the past couple of years, we've seen um, construction costs rise significantly. So while I think the, my gut feeling is that the, the two alternatives, alternative one and two, still are actually quite accurate. Um, I'm concerned that alternative three, um, the 95,000 is actually a bit too low. So we're seeing smaller projects 
um, prices being increased on those projects just based on how busy contractors are and um, the, um, the challenges of working in the wet, so working on this, the face of those abutments. So just uh, that, that's about it. That's all I had for you today as part of, uh, I guess as some, a summary of the report that we had prepared and um, be willing to answer any questions you may have about any step of that process. Okay. Um, Kim and Ed, do you have any questions? No, really, I mean, I've been over this. Um, I think more, you know, should we let maybe the uh, road committee, did they have questions? Yep, they were next, yeah. Yeah, uh, um, Leslie, do you have any questions? Still there? She's muted. This is it, I really don't have any questions. Uh, I don't think option three is really an option. <laughs> We're already two years beyond the date of 2019 that this started. So, uh, like I say, option three, I don't really see as an option. Uh, I'm in, quite interested to see the pictures there. It does, she's in pretty bad shape. Um, option one, I think, would be an option to do. So, yeah, something to think about. No. Question I have is the uh, permit, and you were talking about the permit because of the uh, water flow. And um, is is that? I mean, what kind of a process is that? I mean, is there any way that we could be held up because of that? Um, certainly, the the process can take months. So I, I mean, for permitting, I would anticipate that process would take six months alone. Okay. Um, now, when you're you're going from a 22 foot span to a 40 foot span on the original first um, estimate that you had given, what does that do to the curve of the road? Uh, are we going to have to make an adjustment with that, or are you going to be able to break the difference between Acton and and and, and Milton? Sure. So we we did look at the roadway um, curve and, and it. The 40 foot span doesn't affect the curve. In general, the curve will stay the same. The bridge location will stay the same, centered on the thread of the river. Um, and um, like I said, the bridge just had had to be wider than the existing bridge to accommodate that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so pretty much you're saying that we won't have to do a whole lot of road work to, to make this work. Really, yeah, Other think, than a little raisin and this and that, but. Yeah, in the report, I think we, we, we stated there was about three feet of roadway raising because, I mean, the longer the structure is, the, the taller the structure needs to be. So there's some raising just accommodated in that. And then, you know, the, the hydraulic study showed that the waterway opening wasn't quite sufficient. So there, the bridge bottom also needed to be raised. I think once field survey is completed, like I said, um, I think we can narrow that down. So I think the raising may only be on the order of, you know, one to two feet, but really that should taper back quite quickly and not really affect um, too much, except the, the direct vicinity of the bridge. I don't think it would be too noticeable. On our side of the, on the act, to the side there. I mean, we drive down to it, so I can't. That, I can't imagine that being an issue. It would be on the Milton side where it's flat, and you got the houses. That might be an issue. But um, okay, um, Leslie, do you have any questions from the road committee? Uh, well, my question. My question is, um, Chris, are these the only alternatives that you see? Um, are there any other possibilities, um, you know, like we're looking at another bridge of overlaying a, a, a bridge on top of one? Would that be something that might be doable um, on, or or not? Yeah, so um, you're, you're talking about Canal Road, I assume. Can I, yes, Canal Bridge. Yes. Um, yes, yeah, certainly. So that can be done when the abutments are stable. So in our, in our case, in our bridge that we're looking at, the, the abutments aren't stable. 
Right. That, that was my question is that if, if, the, if the scouring was creating a problem that we would, that would eliminate that as a possibility. Yeah. It, so it, it is possible to keep those abutments there and take the superstructure off. Um, I'm not sure how long that, that the act inside that, that abutment would stay. Um, so the new bridge would need to be so long that it would be able to survive the old abutment falling over. All right. So you don't see that as being a, a feasible solution? I don't see it as being um, sa saving anything. Okay. It would cost more because the bridge would need to be, need to be even longer. And yeah, we don't have a whole lot of room there to really to work with. No, uh, the cost really jumps up the longer you get. Yeah. Um, that was my basic question. I'm not sure if anyone else on the road committee would like to weigh in at this point with any questions they might have. So. I see some shaking of heads. I don't don't look like it anyways. Hi. Um, no, I um, I have a question. Cindy, uh, Cindy uh, from yeah. the road committee. Can you hear me? Yep. Go ahead. Uh, I'm wondering what the deck material is and what the maintenance would be. Sure. Um, there are there are two options for the deck, and it's really not a cost differential, but you can have an exposed concrete deck, um, which is. Generally unfamiliar to, to most municipalities, most, most municipalities have paved decks. So a, a paved deck is also an option. Um, the paved deck requires a little more maintenance in uh, keeping that pavement in good condition so that we keep the water off the structure and, and keep it in good shape. Um, the concrete deck is um, somewhat easier to, uh, to look at and be able to assess its condition. Um, with pavement, in order to really get a good look at the deck, we would need to actually strip the pa strip the pavement off to, to really understand it. So um, that those two things are, are um, you know, I've seen a lot of municipalities go one way or the other. It's it's kind of six and one half dozen the other. Um, as far as maintenance is concerned, really spring cleaning is the the biggest thing. If if this road is salted, um, then clearing that salt off and away from this bridge is is probably the most important thing you could you can do um, so with all of our bridge designs we do provide a basically a maintenance routine um, to the municipality so they know what's what's recommended as far as yearly maintenance and um, sort of uh, preservation activities throughout uh, the bridge lifespan thank you anybody else I'm going out through to make sure nobody's muted. Okay, I don't see anybody else. Um, no, and I, I agree with Ed that the um, the third option really isn't an option. Um, you know, to spend a hundred thousand, and you're saying it could probably be more now because of the time lapse and all that. Um, that you know is pretty much just throwing money into the wind. Um, but uh, the the first option, I, to me, I, I think that's really the only option we've got. I, I, I don't know. It, it seems feasible to me um, and more likely. Um, but what should we look at for – do you, do you believe those prices that you've given, do you believe there's going to be an increase? You know, say, because we, right now we're going to have to start looking towards the next fiscal year before we can actually start budgeting for something like this, what would a percentage, you know, that we should be looking at for an increase from what you have right now? Yeah, unfortunately, the industry standard is between 3 and 5% per year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it, okay. Yeah, it does grow quickly. Okay. Would it be to the town of Acton's best interest? Um, say, um, you know, we're gonna have you know, see having our uh, road committee, you know, working on this and um, having the permits. You guys obviously take care of all the permits, correct? 
Yes. Um, is that something that the town of Acton would be, it would benefit the town of Acton if we started working on permitting sooner than later to make sure that there will, wouldn't be any issues down the road with the funding? Right. I, I mean, I think the first step is to get a hold of Milton and make sure they're on board with this as well. Oh, um, well, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I think if they're going to pay half, I would assume, then, uh, uh, you know, since you, you have to spend money in your own municipality, um, then um, they also need to be on board with this. And on, on their side of things, they have to go through the New Hampshire permitting process to deal with the environmental impacts on that half. And and, and Acton would need to go through the, the main permitting on, on your half. Um, so both of those processes should start as soon as they can. Um, they do last for five years when permits are received. So, um, you, know, you, you can do that at any time. You know, these the, the costs that I'm presenting to you are just you know, what we've seen contractors bid on similar projects and actually complete. Um, we, we study bid data and of, of bridges in the area as well. Um, but you won't know the true cost of the project until you advertise for bids and contractors put down on a piece of paper, you know, to build this according to those plans, this is what the price is. You know, that you, you really won't know the true price until that, that day. So really, for for our sake, because you know, obviously you know we got to vote on a number. We have to have kind of a solid number for us to go to town meeting with. Uh, it would be beneficial for us to have you guys put that out, get a cost when we we think we're going to be in that direction. If we're going to move forward, we've got to start with actually getting a number to put forward. That would be you guys' job. Yes. Yeah, so, um, in general, when we when you advertise a project for contractors bids, the, the municipality should have the money in hand at that time, the funding in hand at least um, to do the project. Because otherwise, so contractors know they're they're aware, um, so they would know if the town if if they're bidding on something that is subject to a town meeting or a town vote and they know there's a possibility that that may not pass, um, the, the project won't look as appetizing as a different project that has funding already in place. Um, at this time, the bidding atmosphere, the bidding climate is quite competitive. Um, so when you, you, it was, it's my advice to make the project as appetizing as possible to contractors in order to get the best price. Um, so, so, you, so you think we ought to put forward a lump sum that we, with your advice, what you think it may cost, then put it out to bid and see if someone bites. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you guys have a bridge uh, capital reserve fund that you've been sort of stocking away at? No, not really. Okay. That's what we see typically is, you know, um, you know, municipalities ha generally have a bunch of bridges that they need to do and, you know, put 50 grand a year aside towards those bridges. So even if you, even if you overfund that capital reserve account, you know, conservatively to fit this project in unknowing what the bids will actually come in, then the reserve amount in that capital reserve can be just, you know, it's just set aside for the next bridge. Um, you know, if you have five bridges and they, they all last 75 years, that means, yeah, you know, through that cycle, you're, you're, you're attacking a bridge um, pretty frequently. Okay. Anybody, uh, anybody else got any questions? Uh, uh, so. Yes. On the Bates, we have considerable drainage issues uh, coming from the Hussey Hill Road going down to the, on both sides of the bridge is this something that will be addressed and and have DEP approved well um, is it do you think it is within um, I guess I'm, is it within the area that would be yeah okay yeah I see I see he'll right in 
So if it's in the bridge project, then um, it's probably cost beneficial for the town to ask that bridge contractor to address those drainage issues. Um, if it is outside the impacts of those projects, it, it may be um, more cost effective for the, the road crews to handle that. But um, it can be, it can be um, sometimes advantageous to have that contractor just solve those issues, especially in a, an area that you know, is adjacent to the project that they're working on. Okay, any more questions? Okay, I don't see none. So, um, okay, I guess from here, um, what, we'll, what we're gonna have to do is um, start putting our heads together here and um, I guess let our road committee. Um, oh, Leslie. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to, you know, since we don't really have the, uh, any money in a capital reserve account, what if, what what about doing a bond issue just for bridges? I mean, because we've got Canal Bridge, we've got Road Bridge, we've got West Shore. Um, what would be Canal Bridge? Is, Canal Bridge is already. I think we're already addressing that okay. issue. So what we still what does this town mean? Okay, so we we still have Road Ro and we have West Shore. Um, and then you know, for anything else, you know, any other bridge issues that might pop up. Um, would that be something that, that might want to be talked about doing a, a bond issue for that, seeing as interest rates are very low at this point? I think we may want to address them separately, but um, I think a bond is is probably the best way to, to approach these. You know, I, to come up with basically a million bucks, you know, just even even over the course of, you know, two or three years if we push this out, we're, we're still going to be behind the eight ball because as much as you push it out, you're you're spending that money on the increase of cost. So yes, Leslie, I, I, I do believe bonding these would be the ultimate way to go. Yeah, I mean, it, it, just because, I mean, if the scarring is that bad, that that bridge could fail. Um, you know, we're, we, we're potentially looking at um, a huge liability you know, should someone be on that bridge when it goes? Correct. If it goes. Yep. So, I mean, it's, you know, just to protect uh, everyone involved in town, I think, would, you know. Yeah. I'd want to see, I want to talk to our treasurer, see where we're at right now with with some of the bonds that we have out there. Um, I don't, you know, we, we, we're pretty fortunate we don't have a lot out there. So mm -hmm. I think, and like you say, the interest rates are pretty low. Um you know, I, I, yeah, I think it's something we definitely should look at. And I think this is a project that we need to need to be moving forward on sooner yeah. than later. I, I think I think we, what we're going to have to do, and of course, we don't have to worry about a million. We, I mean, hopefully we're going to get Milton to split this right. with us. And, right. and uh, so it'd be half the cost, be 500. Hopefully. And um, if but I guess the biggest thing is we got to meet with yeah, Milton. We definitely. If we're gonna get this, if we're gonna get this ball rolling, we got to make sure that they're gonna be in on this. Because I mean, honestly, if they say, "Well, we can't do nothing for four or five years," you know, we're kind of stuck in a situation where I don't really think the town of Acton is gonna be should be put in the situation of paying for the whole thing just because they don't feel like it or they can't. Um, you know, we, we we really have to meet with Milton to see what's going on with us and and if they can give us some sort of idea of what they have down the pipeline would give us a better idea of what we can do with the bond in or whatever get the ball rolling yep definitely yeah it would have been i don't know why but we should have maybe thought about having them come and see his presentation tonight or maybe you know we can reach we can reach out to them cam and see if they want to have um you know, we can do a, a Zoom meeting with everybody and just get the okay. ball rolling. And I can reach out to the administrator tomorrow if you'd like and see if I can yeah. get something scheduled that works for everybody. So they can at least see kind of, you know, what we've done so far and, and you know, where we're kind of going towards. And, and then maybe from there we can, you know, uh, all of us meet together and see if we can uh, get moving on this. I mean, this, this meeting that we had tonight, I think this was just a – was a good idea just as a refresher mm -hmm. um, to see, you know, and the shock value and all that and get everybody back on board because it's been a while. And, um, 
you know, and honestly to make sure that, you know, um, HEB is still on board too. So, um, yeah. So, uh, where, where are we here? Yeah, um, just, so, just if I may chime there in. He is, Chris. You know, we, we have uh, worked with the town of Milton, so they're familiar with us as well. Um, yeah. And uh, I'd be more than willing to give a similar presentation to them as well. No, no, we appreciate it much. And uh, I, our town administrator is going to reach out to their town administrator and see if uh, we can uh, line something up there. And um, we'd really appreciate that. Okay, anybody else? Okay, I guess uh, that's it for tonight. So um, we appreciate it, Chris. Thank you. And um, I guess we'll, uh, we'll adjourn. Thank you for coming, Chris. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Have a good Bye. night. Too.